So this is the Stormgewehr part. I guess I'll call it part five because part three was two parts that I didn't edit together because I was lazy. So that became part three and four. So anyway, this is the uh, after I painted it with uh, Tamiya gunmetal, and it was kind of too light. Um, you know, it was supposed to be that, and it it did it was much lighter. As you can see, we'll put it next to it, so you can kind of see kind of see it was much lighter. So I gave it a wash, as I was talking about before, with um, Model Master uh, Acryl Semi Gloss Black. Um, I usually do washes with uh, with enamel paints, but I didn't. We only had gloss black, not flat or semi gloss. So I was like, oh, I'll use Acryl. So, you know, if you're painting Tamiya, which is a acrylic or it's a synthetic lacquer, it's not like a true enamel paint. Um, if you use a Model Master like or Tester's enamel uh, wash, it won't attack the paint and it'll strip it off. So what I did essentially was, uh, since I was using an Acryl on the uh, Tamiya, I gave this several coats of, um, of dull coat, just Krylon matte finish. Um, so I gave it several coats of that, then I gave it a wash of, um, uh, almost, I think it was about a half and a half mix of uh, the black paint to water, you know, stirred it up, and you just slathered that thing all over it. And on the upper receiver, I slathered it on, you know, after sanding a little bit. I sanded it a little bit before I slathered it on there. No, wait, I slathered, I sanded it a little bit after I slathered it on there. Correction, sand after you slather on the black. Um, so I slathered it all on there, you know, the black, and I had some paper towels. I waited, a, you know, like a minute or two for it to dry up, and I just, you know, lightly, you know, you brush it off the, uh, so it stays in the, the recesses. Most of the guns I saw online, the real ones, yeah, I mean, granted they're 70 years old, but it looks cool. Most of the receiver part, the receiver was, you know, it still was black. So they use some sort of different finish, I'm assuming, or some sort of better quality finishing, because maybe they, this might have been a built in one factory and this might have been built somewhere else where it was just thrown together and whatnot. Um, so you'll see a lot of them that this is still black with, you know, minimal wear. So, I, you know, put more wear on it, but you know. So I kept this part sort of blackish, so it kind of contrasts and looks like they how it looked how they uh, did on the internet. This made in China. I can probably make it out there, yeah. Um, you know, I thought it was just painted on, but apparently it was engraved. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. It'll, you know, whatever. But it came out pretty good. Um, so it looks pretty, uh, pretty beat. Pretty used. I mean, it probably looks 70 years old. I mean, granted, when these guns were new, you know, they were used when they were new. They were made in 1944. It's like, uh, there's not much, not much time for them to get aged. Um, Painted this with Tamiya wood and just kind of put a few little lines of uh, of dark brown in there and then washed it over with black as well. Uh, same with the mag, you know, got a wash on it. Um, I have three more mags at home that just came in, um, so I don't know if I will do the same treatment on those. They're already black, so I'm thinking maybe I'll just sand the uh, sand the edge or dry brush the edges with uh, steel and then seal it and see how those look. So I have mags that, you know, aren't all the same, but look cool. So, you know, it's got some wear, it looks cool. Um, you know, the stock, which is probably, it was pretty swelled up from being soaking in coffee, but uh, it seems to have shrunk back down, so. Looks, looks pretty cool. Um, I was trying to, you know, it's hard to match real wood and painted wood. So I got real wood right there, and now you have like wood I painted. <laughs> you know, it's not like painting a tank or a car. It's just painting wood is hard. You know, to get the effect of wood, it's a real art. Um, so that's that. That's uh, part five. Uh, Prometheus Barrel came in. I'm gonna put that Reaps bucking I put I got from Airsoft GI in there. That was uh, when I had to get uh, to get an order over 100 bucks, get free shipping. I just needed like a couple bucks or whatever. So I, you know threw on the bucking. They're one of those reaps bucking, so we'll see how it performs. I mean it's just a bucking. If I don't like it I can take it out. But uh you know it was like eight bucks and it was enough to get me over to free shipping. And shipping was like 
damn, I, I want to say shipping was probably like 30 bucks, 20 bucks or 30 bucks, under 100 bucks, you know? So, you know, it's well worth it. If you're right at the cusp, if you're like at uh, 90 bucks, you know, throw something on there to get free shipping. But that's it for now for uh, part five. Um, next part, the gun will be fully assembled with the gearbox and all that in it. And we'll do a test fire over the chrono and see what it does. And see what it measures up. I have yet to test fire because, you know, it's paint. <laughs> you know, it's going to dry. I don't want to get paint on my clothes. So anyway, um, stay tuned for episode six.